Good evening, one and all, and welcome to episode 248 of Love at First Scent with me, Percy Lays, coming to you live this evening on YouTube. Whether you're watching live or the recording, you're very welcome. Thank you for tuning in. Please do feel free to leave a comment or ask a question, regardless of whether you're watching live or the recording. First comment goes to David, who's saying yes. And Kim's going testing, testing, one, two, three, okay? Uh, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do consider doing so, and please consider supporting my work on coffee. You will find information about all of that in the video description below. I'm just going on the old tablet to make sure that things are coming through loud and clear. Okay. Uh, who's that? Uh, who, I, I just saw somebody saying, a DJ saying, Cartier has a lot of good stuff and I feel they're slept on compared to the rest of the designer houses. Um, I agree with you. It, always, always worth seeing what they're doing, um, especially as their in-house perfumer is the supremely talented Mathilde Laurent. I cannot even remember the last time I saw her. It was a long time ago. It was in her Paris offices, but she is always a real joy to talk to. And if one day I could get her to agree to do an interview with us here on, on in, you know, in the Love at First Sense studio, that would be amazing because she's very, very interesting to talk to about perfumery. Those of you who speak French and understand French and can read French, I think you may be interested to know that she's, I believe she's done a series of podcasts with Cartier, which I think have gone down very well, but but they are in French and I don't think they're translated into English. Loads of comments. Constantine saying, I love the original declaration all the way from back when it was launched, particularly the declaration essence. Just jumped on the Cartier train, says Tina, so I'm intrigued. I've been hearing good things about this flanker, so I'm looking forward to this, says Jeremy. Another fresh and underwhelming release, says Paolo, so striking a slightly different note there. Uh, Maudlin never really ventured to Cartier, though there is a Jardin one I remember smelling in store and liking. Ooh, um... I suppose there could have been. You're not getting mixed up with Hermès, are you? So, um, this one I have sniffed already. By the way, I can't show you the proper bottle of it. I've just got like a little Traveló thing here. But the bottle is essentially the same as the Declaration bottle. I think images of it are already available online, except it's got a green tinge. So I've brought out my Declaration family, which actually is larger than this, but these are the ones I decided to, to, to bring out today. This is the original composed by none other than Jean-Claude Elena, which came out in 1998. I think of it as very much being a 21st century scent, and yet it, it did come out bef before the end of the 20th century. I've got here a discontinued flanker from 2001 called uh, Declaration Bois Bleu, and then the, I believe this one is the most recent version prior to the one that we are smelling today. This was Mathilde Laurent's Parfum version. Uh, she also did a Déclaration d'un soir. Uh, going back a few years now, that one must be going back a, a good, good 10 years, I think, which had a very interesting kind of bell pepper pimento note. Um, so, yeah, be beautiful, beautiful um, masculine scent. Um, very much in the territory of what Jean-Claude Elena also did for Hermès when he made Terre d'Hermès except that this is uh, heavier in its use of cardamom and feels cooler and fresher and somehow more energetic. Terre, terre is earthier. It, 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 it plays more heavily on the vetiver note, whereas this is, um, th th this is more romantic. I mean, it, it's no coincidence that the, the original bottle design features, I think very, very cleverly, actually quite subtly. You kind of can't unsee it once you've seen it, but you don't always see it straight away, a sort of heart design there. And 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 this part very much looks like shoulders. And, and I always thought that this was rather a neat little um, uh, spray stopper that they used. So this one I have smelt already. And I have to say I was quite taken with it. Um, but if, if, if you're expecting a different, lighter version of Declaration, then you will be disappointed because this, this is this is doing something rather different. And this was one of these scents. I've sprayed it a few times and smelt it a few times um, already. And it's one of these ones that reminds me of something from the past in that most annoying, I know I've smelt this before, but I can't quite put my finger on it. So maybe some of you out there will be able to help me out. Uh, Tomash says, not a fan of the original declaration as it's too spicy for me, but I do find extremely exciting the, the flanker Declaration d'un soir. A good scent for Valentine's Day, I guess. Yeah. Um, 
Jeremy, I definitely associate Declaration EDT with the late 90s, early 2000s. I have fond memories that push out all the foul body sprays that cropped up then. Um, so this is this is interesting because it's all about a kind of crossover between citruses, which doesn't sound particularly intriguing, citruses and sappiness, a kind of piney, eucalyptusy, trees, green tree sappiness. Um, and when you smell it, even though it really isn't like very much like Guerlain Herba Fresca, you are kind of vaguely reminded of it through its greenness and by association as well, because of course that was made by the same perfumer who made this, Mathilde Laurent. Um, and then somewhere in there as well, there is a kind of allusion to a, a, a tea note or the kind of leafy, tree-like, bergamotty combination that is put forward as a tea note in a lot of sense. It, 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 it's kind of way more intriguing than it has any right to be. Um, does it hit, hint at L'Envol, says David? Uh, no, I wouldn't have thought so. I mean, L'Envol is all about the honey and the tobacco and the spices and the sweetness. I, I love it, by the way. Another ridiculously underrated scent from Cartier. One of, one of the best things that Mathilde, Mathilde Laurent has done for them, I think, and really fascinating, brilliant bottle, and, and, and yet it doesn't seem to have struck a chord, at least not in, in this country. Um, and yeah, it, 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 as, as, a, as a sort of fresh flanker, it's not overcomplicated. Um, so in that sense, it ticks all the right boxes. It, it, it gives you an instant hit. It's kind of an instant spritz of, of, um, of energy. So I guess in that sense, it's similar to, to the original declaration. Um, and, and, and it's quite linear and quite streamlined. And and I think that's that. I just remembered something else that I thought of as well. It, when I first smelt it, I actually wondered, sort of perversely, whether it's the best aqua allegoria we've had for a long time. Because obviously it isn't an aqua allegoria, but just the way that it takes two rather quite quite simple, but not necessarily simplistic accords, but two very very legible, very distinct, very clear, very light, very fresh accords, places them alongside each other in in a way that is just about compelling enough to make you go, oh, what's happening here? This is interesting. But also you can forget about it because you are meant to be wearing a light, undemanding scent. In that sense, it's like the best of the Aqua Allegorias, which is why it did make me think of Herba Fresca and Pompe Um Tea and bergamot, says James, like Earl Grey. Yes, I suppose so. And, and then a kind of cedary inflection comes into it as well. And some something something leafy green that makes me think of the eau de narcisse bleu that jean claude Alana did for hermes it, it keeps flirting with with all of those areas with the sort of greens and the herbs the aromatic herbs and the citruses in in i think a commendable way and if i were jetting off somewhere really hot and sunny very soon which i'm not about to but if i were I absolutely would consider packing this with me. Um, I'm I'm looking. Now, for those of you who are watching the recording, this is not going to mean anything to you, but out of the corner of my eye here, I can see the bottle that I have got lined up for the video that I'm going to do live straight after this one. It's a bottle of something that originally came out in 2001 from a completely different brand. And I'm actually now want, looking at that and thinking, oh, is that what it reminded me of? Um, well, it's not fair to keep you in suspense as it's not. So this is this is this is the original Mugler Cologne, okay, from from uh what did I just say from 2001? And I'm now thinking if the 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 steaminess of the musks and the sappiness linked with the musks actually did make me think of the Mugler Cologne, and maybe it did. 
which which just makes the Cartier more interesting. It it is an interesting piece of work. Um, as I say, somehow way more interesting than you think it has any right to be. Uh, there's a very, very pre brief um, press blurb. I shall share it with you now. Just need to bring it up on the screen. Where has it disappeared to? Oh, no, I know where I left it. Hang on. Bear with me. Here we go. So, created by Cartier perfumer Mathilde Laurent, this new variation reveals a second nature that is as botanical as it is vivacious. Yes, there is something, there is something like, you know, stepping into the Eden project about it, something curiously organic, just, just vaguely triffid-like. Um, it enriches the palette of this spicy and woody scent, emblematic and elegant, known for its olfactory intensity, lending a vivacity to the original ingredients of declaration uh, or toilette. The fragrance blooms again, unprecedented, like a new spring. Okay, tell us something. The cedar is brimming with sap, the spices are fresher, the citrus leaves are greener and more delicate. Yeah, except that it, it's that botanical feel. It feels... It feels curiously, curiously... <laughs> bitingly vegetal in a way that the Mugler Cologne did. Uh, what are people saying? Uh, the Mugler Cologne or, says Constantin, also reminds me, dare I say it, of a Creed fragrance, but not any of the popular ones, original vetiver, um, and Euros pointing out about the perfumer. Let's not talk about the Mugler, because that's going to be in the next video. I'm a sucker for Mugler cologne, says Jeremy, so I'm going to get a decant of this when I can. Um, um, so so do do check this one out. If you, if you are wanting to add to your uh, fragrance wardrobe something that is doing that kind of summery citrusy fang, but but without resorting to very, very obvious cliches. I would say check this one out. Just just for old time's sake. I dropped the blotter, but I shall pick it up. Just for old time's sake. Let's let's have a spray of the original, of the Jean-Claude uh Eleanor original. Because it's also interesting to see if if I suddenly think of if, if I suddenly smell something different in it, you know, having having um not sprayed it for a while. I suppose this bottle. Counts as a bit of a vintage one now. I mean, I've had it for quite a while. Any um, any Cartier batch code experts can tell me how I can age mine. Yeah, so here you immediately get that hit of cardamom, very, very cooling. Whereas the other one you see, have, the new one has got a more of a steamed, slightly hotter feel to it. Um, yes, th this, is, this is gingery, this is grapefruity, um, much more transparent. It's funny because they're calling the new one haute fraîcheur. Um, I think this one maybe is actually somehow more fraîcheur than the haute fraîcheur, but but the new one is fraîcheur in a different kind of way. It it's it's um it's worth checking out, worth checking out. And if you've never tried original declaration, that absolutely is worth checking out because that just simply happens to be one of the greatest um masculines of all time. So a definite thumbs up for me, for the new Cartier. Thank you very much for watching. If you are sticking around for another live, I've given it away now. We're going to be talking about Mugler. So see you in a few minutes.